Hi, solving systems of equations with Kramer's rule. What Kramer's rule does is it uses matrices and determinants to solve a system of equations. And uh, your system of equations is something like ax plus by equals c, dx plus dy equals f, where the letters a through f are constants. And what we're trying to do is find our values of x and y that satisfy these constancy. Let's try an s. Okay, uh, so the way we would solve for x is we do the determinant of two matrices and we divide them. And the matrix on top, when I'm solving for x, since I'm solving for x, what I do is I remove those coefficients of x and in their place, I put the coefficients or the numbers c and f, whatever's on the right side of the equation. So I take out ab and I put in cf and then I have b and e. So that's my numerator. The denominator is just the coefficients of AB or of X and Y as it is. So AB, DE in the bottom. Uh, when I solve for Y, same concept, except I will remove the coefficients of Y. I take those out, and then in their place, I put C and F. And that's what I've done right here. Let's see. I think. Whatever. Hey, there. So I take out the B and E, and I put in the C and the F. And once I find those determinants and I divide, you'll get your numerical answers for X and Y. Uh, if, you have a three, if you have three equations and three variables, the concept's still the same. It's just you have bigger, uglier matrices that you have to deal with. So let's try one with real numbers, make it a little bit easier. Uh, looking at this, if I want to set up the matrix that solves for X using Kramer's rule, I know I'm going to divide the determinants of two different matrices. Now, the one on bottom is always really easy because it's simply the coefficients of x and y as the equations originally are. So my bottom matrix is going to be 2, negative 1, and 1, 4. The top matrix is a little bit trickier. Since I'm solving for x, what we'll do is we'll take the x's out and we put 5 and 7 in their place. So since I'm solving for x, I take the coefficients of x out, and instead of 2 and 1, we'll have 5 and 7. These remain the same, negative 1, 4. And then we will find those determinants, work it out, and that's going to give us our value for x. Uh, for y, we're going to set up the same way. The bottom matrix is the coefficients as they are in the original equation, 2, negative 1, 1, 4. And then the numerator, since I'm solving for y this time, I'm trying to find the y values, then 5 and 7 will replace the coefficients of the y's. So I'll take out the negative 1 and the 4, and I'll replace it with the 5 and the 7. The 2 and the 1 will remain the same. And then we'll do these determinants. So let's do that real quick. If you remember determinants, you do downhill minus uphill. So I'll go downhill, which is 5 times 4, that's 20, minus uphill. Oh, geez. What's going on here? There we go. Minus uphill. And 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Okay, I'm going to have to quit using the highlighter because it's going to take me forever. Why isn't this working? Jeez. Okay, I think it's finally going to work. Okay, so uh, 5 times 4 is 20 minus 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. Oh, 10. Negative 7. There we go. Divided by 2 times 4 is 8 minus 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And then we work that out. 20 minus negative 7, that's 20 plus 7. 8 minus negative 1 is 9. 27 divided by 9 is 3. So that's what x equals. Do the same thing for y. 2 times 7, multiply downhill, minus 1 times 5, multiply uphill, divided by 2 times 4, minus 1 times negative 1. Which actually, that bottom one already had. I should have just looked up here and said the determinant of the bottom one is 9, but oh well. 14 minus 5 is 9. 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. So there is my value for y. So we know that the solution for this these two lines will intersect at the point 3, 1. And that's using Kramer's rule. The setup's pretty nice. You just have to use determinants to solve for x and y. Uh, let's do another one. Two equations, two variables. So let's set up for x. 
this bottom to not, bottom matrix is always really nice because it's the coefficients as they originally are. 3, negative 2, 1, 3. And then on top, since I'm solving for x, I'm going to replace the 3 and the 1 with negative 16 and 13. And then negative 2 and 3 are going to stay the same. And then we'll work that out. 16 times 3 is 48. Minus 13 times negative 2 is going to be plus 26. All divided by 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 1 times negative 2, which would be plus 2. Uh, and then we have negative 48 plus 26 is negative 22. 9 plus 2 is 11. Negative 22 over 11 is negative 2. So now I know what x is. Solve for y. Same thing, bottom matrix, 3, negative 2, 1, 3. Those are just the coefficients as they were. Then on top, since I'm solving for y, the x coefficients stay the same, but we replace y with negative 16 and 13. And we'll work that out. 39, 3 times 13, minus 1 times negative 16, which will make that plus all over 3 times 3, minus... 1 times negative 2, so that's going to cancel. That's going to give me 39 plus 16. This doesn't seem right. What's 39 plus 16? 55? Ah, oh, never mind, this is nice. Okay, 9 plus 2 is 11. 55 divided by 11 is 5. There's my y, which means these two lines intersect at the point negative 2, 5. ba down ba down you're good. You're good. I like this. It's not too bad. I don't. I don't think. Maybe I shouldn't say that. This is really hard. Okay. Uh, last one. Last one. And I'm not sure. That, uh, yeah. Well, I guess we'll do this. Whatever. I'm gonna have to pause it a lot while I do some of the mindless arithmetic. But uh, here we are. We're solving for three variables. And so let's set this up. Let's set up for each variable first. Let's do x. And x is going to be, let's see, well, my bottom matrix is going to be my normal coefficients. So negative 1, negative 2, and 4, 3, negative 6, and 1z, 3 minus 6y plus z, 2x plus 5y, so positive 5. There's no z, so we need to put a z zero place filler. And then the numerator, since I'm solving for x, we're going to replace these x values with these numbers on the right side. So 12, 15, and negative 1. We'll replace those. And then we'll do negative 2, negative 6, 5, 4, 1, 0. And we'll find the determinant at the top, determinant at the bottom. We'll divide. That'll give us our answer. For y, same thing. Now I'm going to cheat because I don't want to have to write all this over again. I'm going to copy and paste that because that is what's going to go in the, oh, geez, what just happened? What did I copy? What's going on here? Hang on. There, got it. Okay, so uh, my y's, my bottom, my bottom one never changes. So the numerator, since I'm replacing my y's, solving for y, then 12, 15, and 1 is going to go down the middle, which is where the y coefficients were. Everything else is going to stay the same. So negative 1, 3, 2 on the left column, 4, 1, 0 on the right column. And then for z, again, let me copy and paste. Okay, for z, so we have the bottom one still being the same, the numerator. Now I'm solving for z, so 12, 15, and 1 will replace the last column. 12, 15, 1, and then we'll keep all the others the same. Negative 1, 3, 2, negative 2, negative 6, Five. Uh, now these problems are a complete pain because now we have to do the determinant of four different matrices. We have the denominator and then we have the three different numerators. Uh, and determinants of a three by three, while they're not difficult, they're just time consuming. So what I will probably do on a test if I were to quiz you on this is I'll probably simply say use Kramer's rule to solve for y. So you would only have to do one of these or Kramer's rule to solve for x. So because if, if you can solve for one, and you can show me that you can do Kramer's rule correctly for one of them, then you can do the other two. So what I'll do, um, I'll solve for y by hand, and then what I'll do is I'm going to do the other two in a calculator, just so I can have the answers real quick. So let's do y by hand, and I think I'm going to, 
um, simply recopy the first two and do my determinant this way. So bring down the 1, 3, and the 2, and then the 12, 15, and the 1. Our other option would be to do expansion by minors, which I don't really feel like doing right now. So y is going to be, let's see, multiply downhill, negative 1 times 15 times 0, which is 0. 12 times 1 times 2 is 24. And 4 times 3 times 1 is 12. Minus, and then we'll multiply uphill. 2 times 15 is 30, times 4 is 120. Plus 1 times 1 times 1 is negative 1, so I'll change that to minus 1. And then 0. In my denominator... Again, I'm going to copy those first two columns, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 2, negative 6, and 5. And the good thing is once you get that first denominator, you have the other two as well. Uh, let's see, so I'll multiply that 1 times negative 6 times 0. Negative 2 times 1 times negative 2 is negative 4. 4 times 3 is 12, times 5 is 60. Minus, and then we'll multiply uphill. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, times 4 is negative 48, plus 5 times 1 times negative 1 will be negative 5, and then 0. And then we'll do the arithmetic to clean that up. All right, I just spent about 15 minutes looking at this thing, wondering why the heck it wasn't working. And this is a good example of why you need to be extra careful with your work. Uh, this number down here is a negative 1, and when I replace it with my y's, I put a positive 1. So my numerator is wrong as far as the determinant is concerned. I need to put that negative in there, which is going to change this to a negative, which is going to change this row right here. So uh, I'm going to pause it while I fix that. The, the idea behind the determinant was correct. I, the one I had written, I computed correctly, but it ended up giving me a really bad answer for y. And for the same reason, I need to replace this one right here with a negative 1. So let me rework this. I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to finish this to get my y answer, and I'll be right back. All right, there we go. So we get an answer of negative 1 for y. The determinant of the numerator and denominator ended up being 109, or, yeah, negative 109 and 109. Uh, for x, I have those answers. When you work the determinant of the numerator for x, you will get 218. And we already know the bottom is 109. When you divide that, you will get 2. And for z, the determinant of the numerator is 327. You work that out, and we know the denominator is 109, which gives you a z coordinate of 3. So here's our z, and here's our x. Now again, I, I had those, I did those on the side. Uh, I just didn't want to spend a whole lot of time doing all of those determinants. But that is how you would work out Kramer's rule with a 3 by 3.